the land of Artsakh, thanks to its enchanting natural beauty and rich centuries-old history and culture, Artsakh is the crown of the Caucasus, the heart of the Armenian highlands. In itself, it's a kingdom of skyscraping mountains and bottomless gorges, rushing rivers, frosty springs, thousand-year-old monasteries and castles, lacework cross stones and prehistoric caves. Here, the past and present, the new and old, exist side by side. Artsakh is a dream sculpted from stone. Artsakh is the land of mighty princes and impregnable fortresses. It is a symphony of natural and man-made wonders. Artsakh is the land of the soul. Artsakh was one of the 15 provinces of Great Haik in historical Armenia, renowned for its military prowess and its mighty cavalry, notable not only for its brave warriors, but also for its swift stallions. Even today, these wild stallions of stunning beauty gallop unbridled, nobly traversing the land like creatures of yore. Even in the royal stables of Queen Elizabeth, they hold a prized place. Today, on a portion of historic Artsakh's lands, the Republic of Mountainous Gharapakh has been established as a second Armenian state. The Republic of Artsakh covers nearly 12,000 square meters. For a long time, this monumental statue, We and Our Mountains, affectionately known as Grandma and Grandpa, has been the symbol of the land, the embodiment of the Artsakh people, firm like the mountains, standing tall, never retreating and never yielding, with roots put down firmly in their land. Stepanager, capital of Artsakh, is the hub of government and commerce for the entire region. The crossroads of the countrywide network of roads, the city's harmonious architecture and design bear the imprint of the city's first architect, the renowned city planner, Alexander Tamanyan. In the city founded still in the fifth century, modern structures and first-class hotels stand along the old and historic buildings. Lovers of ethnic tourism can experience authentic village life in cozy bed and breakfasts in the countryside. Tourist information centers, conveniently located throughout Artsakh, make it easy to get around. In each old town, the market gives local color. Stepanagerd's market is overflowing with fresh fruits, vegetables, and spices. There's a flavor array of pickles and preserves, carefully selected and dried medical herbs, and many other delicacies. Artsakh is known for its arts and crafts. Their handiwork tells the history, traditions, simplicity, and faith of this land. Artsakh's artisans are creative and imaginative. It's hard to believe that such intricate, delicate, and unique works were actually made by hand. Artsakh's silver and goldsmiths have a centuries-old tradition. Their exquisite work is on display at the Stepanagerd Natural History of Museum. Artsakh's rugged terrain is home to diverse wildlife, hard and dangerous to see in their natural habitat. They are on display here. At sunset, Stepanagerd is aglow as the city wakes up for nightlife. Cafes, restaurants, bars and clubs are bustling in the evening. As the moon rises, 
Stepanagert's park with its singing and dancing fountains. And special light effects is the place to be. Ten kilometers above Stepanagert lies Artsakh's soul, the historic town of Shushi. A natural fortress since ancient times was a stronghold, later a walled citadel. Shushi is a beautiful city with interesting architecture. Two to three story homes with ornate balconies, magnificent churches and historic buildings. There's much to see in Shushi. Holy Savior, Razan Chetsot's church. Built completely of white stone, with its carved angels, soars into the blue sky. A divinely inspiring sight. Here, prayers are said not with words upon lips, but with sighs of the heart. The church was built in late 19th century, but it greatly suffered after occupation by Azeri raiders who set the city on fire. After Shushi's liberation, Holy Savior Church was reconstructed as a spiritual symbol of Artsakh's restored independence and rebirth. This dome is visible nearly everywhere in Shushi. It is St. John the Baptist Church, often called the Green Church because of the green tint of the dome. Built in the shape of a cross, this church of white stone melds right into its surroundings. A short visit to the city's Natural History Museum will surely convince you that Shushi has been a center of arts and craftsmanship from ancient times. Artsakh is also known for its carpets, Many designs date back centuries, even millennia, passed on from generation to generation. Touring the museum, you are transported through many eras, ending up in the 19th century hall where you find yourself in the warm embrace of an Armenian family around a table drinking fragrant tea from a samovar. Each year, at the Art Center in Shushi, there is an international gathering of sculptors in honor of Hagop Gyurjan. Sculptors from around the world each carve a statue and donate it to the city. Artsakh sees respect and preserve not only their own cultural heritage, but also that of their neighbors. One of the city's many notable sites is the Shushi Mosque, or as it is known in Shushi, the Great Mejit. Although it is Persian, the facade has a distinctly Armenian architectural style. Artsakh is a real paradise, land of natural wonders. Here's the Hunot Gorge Reserve, with its wide valleys and fields of flowers, forests, ridges, and mountain peaks that reach the blue sky, awash in a sea of green. The Honot Gorge Reserve attracts ecotourists who enjoy vacationing under tents shaded by pine trees. This place is called Umbrellas, a symphony of nature where the melodies mingle in perfect harmony. 
In Artach, every tree and flower sings its song. It's a land of music and musicians. Elsewhere, the body dances and sings. Here, the song. The people of Artsakh are a people of faith. Their land is sacred to them. Not far from Shushi is Dashushan, home of the holy place of Saribek, a place of worship preserved since ancient, even pagan times. Pilgrims from distant lands come to this place, drawn by their belief in the invisible power of this sacred place. <laughs> Trees that are a couple of centuries old are common here. However, the Tanji plane tree is the oldest and most famous tree in Artsakh. It is more than 2,000 years old. During the Soviet era, the tree was even given a passport as the oldest and highest tree in the Soviet Union. The gigantic tree is over 54 meters high, as high as an 18-story building. Artsakh was also a center of scholarship. Here, at Amaras, Saint Mestrop Mashtots, who invented the Armenian alphabet, founded Artsakh's first school. Saint Grigoris, the grandson of Armenia's first Catholicos, Saint Gregory the Illuminator, is buried here. He came to preach the gospel to the Caucasian Albanians. According to the tradition, the king of the Albanians ordered him drawn and quartered. After the martyrdom of Saint Grigoris, his disciples brought his relics to Amaras to be buried. Amaras continued through the centuries as a center of learning, despite many foreign invasions. In the 19th century, this strong walled village served as a citadel. Artsakh has been inhabited since time immemorial, even before the emergence of Homo sapiens. This is the Azoch cave, one of the oldest Stone Age sites in the Caucasus. The cave is more than 2,000 square meters. Each year, archaeologists work a whole month, day in and day out, at Azoch. Archaeologists from England, Ireland, and Spain have conducted excavations. Some of the oldest objects at Azoch date back nearly 300,000 years. Tools as well as plant and animal fossils have been uncovered. Fragments of a pre-Neanderthal jaw were also found here. Surely, Azo holds many other secrets. Spelunkers, archaeologists, and others come each year hoping to make a discovery about this Stone Age civilization. Artsakh is a land of strong and influential lords. The magnificent two-story mansion of the Eganian family is located in the Dal village. Nearby stands St. John's Church, 
dating to the 13th century. From there unfolds an expansive village landscape with its myriad shades of green. St. Stephen's Church is also located in Dol, adorned with 51 khachkars, one more exquisite than the next, lacework and needlework. In stone is uniquely Armenian. On the cliffs above Dol, the ruins of Virgin's Hermitage Chapel are visible, jutting out from the earth. Inspired by the magic of nature, thrill seekers can go rock diving among the waterfalls from a cliff into a clear pool of mountain water. Artsakhtis, with their boundless enthusiasm and love of life, have not forgotten about recreation. Not far from Dol is Medzdagher village. Here, women gather thyme, mint, and a variety of other medical herbs with care from the nearby fields and river valleys. From generation to generation, the recipes for these teas, as well as other traditional arts, have been masterfully passed on. The Stepanagerd Natural History Museum has many exhibits about the new and old artisans of Artsakh. The people of Artsakh are steadfast, unwavering, and indomitable. Need proof? Watch a muscular Artsakh blacksmith beating a disobedient iron into submission. The blacksmith does not put down his hammer until the iron is subdued and taken the desired form. Artsakh's hospitality is legendary. The countryside is dotted with inns. This is Gharabazar Inn, an architectural marvel, built in the 17th century. It is no longer in operation, but it continues to greet visitors with the same hospitality. The southern boundary of Artsakh is formed by the Arax River, one of the holy rivers of paradise. Arax teems with fish, trout, and huge catfish, as well as many other species. Artsakh is a land of waters. This is the beautiful Sarsang Reservoir. Here, the crystal clear water is like a turquoise mirror, reflecting the mountains on all sides. The Sarsang Reservoir is built on the Tartar River, the Tartar is Artsakh's largest river, flowing from the mountain headwaters through the deep forest gorges. Artsakh is a land of fast-flowing rivers. These sometimes wild rivers overflow their banks, yet they were tamed by the Artsakh seas long ago, spanned by strong, elegant, arched bridges. From its mountains and rocky crevices 
flow fresh, frosty springs. The spring at Aikistan village is known for its curative properties. It is a natural remedy for numerous ailments. People from near and far visit Aikistan to drink from these waters to restore or enhance their health. To truly appreciate the charm of nature, one must see Karvacha. This magnificent place called Zuar was made not by man, but by nature. It is a natural jacuzzi. The temperature in the pool is sometimes as high as 70 degrees centigrade. These hot springs also have curative properties. People come great distances to bathe in these bubbling pools. Artsakh is a land of impregnable forts. This is Askeran Fort. Its double wall and topography make it unassailable. Its engineering and construction are exceptional. It is a breakthrough in medieval architecture. The fort opened a new page in Artsakh architectural history. The ramparts are nearly two meters wide and nine meters high. The lookout towers are connected by a narrow corridor. The half-ruined fortress today continues to dominate the landscape, with its former glory on the heights telling each passerby of the mighty majesty of Artsakh. The Armenian highlands are home to grape growing and winemaking. Artsakh's flavorful wines are well known around the world. All wines are prepared from local fruit. Samples of Artsakh's winemaking history are on display in the Stepanagerd Natural History Museum. Artsakh is known for its mulberry vodka, made from Artsakh's famous mulberries. Shaking the mulberry trees is a ritual here. Family, neighbors, and friends gather and the family elder presides over the fruit harvest. The next phase of the ritual is left to the man of the house, distilling the spirits. Mulberry vodka is famous for its taste and medical properties. Nearly everyone in Arta, especially in the villages, distills mulberry spirits, not only for traditional toasts at important events, but also as a cure for colds and other ailments. Artsakh was at the crossroads of ancient civilizations, trade, culture, and politics. Thus, King Digran the Great, who ruled Armenia from sea to sea, founded four cities with the name Digranagerd, including one in Artsakh. This ancient Armenian city, in Hellenistic style, was built on the right bank of the Khachen River in the first century BC. The excavations at Dikranagerd began in 2006. In a well-preserved 18th century castle, a museum has been established. The discovery of Dikranagerd proves that even in ancient times, construction was well developed in this area. The citadel was uncovered during excavations. 
having been cleared of the sand and dust, these stones tell the story of this most mighty Armenian king and his times. Archaeologists have found a 60-meter segment of the northern interlocking stone wall. A 9-meter diameter tower has also been discovered, constructed of smooth, hewn interlocking stone. The once impregnable citadel lies at the foot of a monastery. The seventh century monastery, with its small central dome, watches over the ruins of the Granagerd to this day, caringly cradled on this mountain slope between heaven and earth. On the other slope, in the caves and rocks, an early Christian hermitage has been discovered. In one cave, 4th century crosses were found on the walls. In the vicinity of the Kranagerd, another early Christian basilica has been uncovered. This 5th, 6th century church is unusual in the Caucasus because of its large size, smooth-hewn floor and walls, and its elegant architectural design. Artsakh is an open-air museum. In Zagashat village, an entire neighborhood has been made into a museum. Artsakhtis are freedom-loving. They have always fought for their independence. That's why this land has borne many brave warriors and soldiers. Nikol Duman, the famous leader of the Armenian Liberation Movement, was born here. His house, as well as the entire neighborhood, has been restored as it was in the 19th century. A stroll through the museum provides a picture of the lifestyle, customs, beliefs and traditions of the 19th century Artsakh life. These are called zizi stones. In the old days, offerings of fire or water were made on these stones, seeking favor with the gods. Sun, sun, come, come, come upon the zizi stone, wrote poet Ghazaros Agayan in his verses dedicated to these stones. Leaving their games behind, children run to the hearth, where their mothers are baking Artsakh's signature bread, Zhingyalov Hats. Traditionally, this bread is prepared with more than 20 different herbs. After tasting Zhingyalo huts, Artsakh is imprinted in one's own palate. Old and beautiful traditions persist here alongside the modern. For example, celebrating Vartalar, the Feast of the Transfiguration. This holiday is built on pagan traditions relating to the goddesses of love and beauty, Astri. Now it has Christian significance and is notable for the ritual practice of sprinkling of water. This earthly paradise is home to God-loving, God-fearing people. Their sincere devotion to God is expressed through their houses of prayer they have constructed. Gantasar is Artsakh's jewel. 
The focal point is the dome of the cathedral, covered with sculptures. Founded in the 13th century, this monastery's architectural glory is surpassed only by the tradition that the head of St. John the Baptist is buried here. One of the chapels bears his name. At Gansasar, time stops. This stone structure becomes a spiritual edifice. Here, like nowhere else, one feels the soaring spirit. Christianity came to Artsakh as early as the first century. Dadivank was founded upon the grave of Christ's apostle, Dadios' disciple, Dadi, who came to preach Christianity in Artsakh just decades after Christ's crucifixion. He died a martyr's death. Here you feel, in body and soul, that your prayers reach heaven's door. Dadivang is renowned for its exquisite khachkars. Each khachkar is a masterpiece of intricate stonework. The monastery was built over many centuries. In the 17th century, the monks were forced to abandon it. Yet, even in its half-ruined state, it inspires awe. Artsakh is like an invisible canvas. A country of peaks and trees that reach the sky and bottomless canyons which awe us with their beauty and remind us of the strength and majesty of Artsakh. Everything takes on a special, eternal meaning, solid as stone. Many tales remain untold of this fabled land of Artsakh. Its tales and discoveries are endless. Perhaps this wonderful country, with its friendly, welcoming people, has already found a place in your heart. Come to Artsakh, this land of dreams. We're always waiting for you. <laughs>